My name is Josh Emmett and I want to talk to you today about Six Sigma. Six Sigma is a managerial practice like Total Quality Management that helps managers to locate and reduce production costs as well as production inefficiencies. Six Sigma came into play in the early 1980s when an engineer for Motorola named Bill Smith came up with the idea. He called it Six Sigma because it relates to statistical terms. Sigma is the 18th character of the Greek alphabet and statisticians use it to represent standard deviation. Now for a quick background in uh, standard deviation so you understand the, the rest of what we're talking about with Six Sigma, standard deviation is the average distance of a number set between each number and uh, the mean of the number set. So for example, if you have a, a small number set, the only two numbers in your set are 5 and 7, then the average of those two numbers is 6. So we're going to use that 6 as our mean, and the distance between each of the numbers in the number set and that mean is, is 1. Five, the difference between 5 and 6 is 1, and the difference between 6 and 7 is 1, and the average of those two is 1. So we know that our standard deviation for that for that number set is 1. And now the importance of the standard deviation is there, but it's hard to see in that example. So let me give you a second example to illustrate the importance of the standard deviation. Let's say that you take your car into an auto mechanic repair shop. When you get in there, you, you tell the man that you need to have your water pump replaced and you ask for a price quote. The repairman tells you, I, I can do the job and I can tell you that I've done three of those jobs and the average price is $500. Well, you walk out of there thinking that you know that this is going to cost $500, but maybe if you understood the standard deviation of, the, of this, the number set that he's using, you'd have a little bit more information. Let's say that he'd done those three jobs, and the first job he'd done for a friend, so he charged $0. The next job he'd done for $500 even, and then a third job cost $1,000. Well, the average of those three jobs is still $500, like he said, he was accurate but the standard deviation is $500, meaning that, that your job could cost anywhere between zero and thousand dollars, so you, you'd be much less sure of the estimate that you got. However, if those three jobs that he told you about, the one cost $499, the other one was 500 even, and the third was $501, then you get the pretty good feeling that your job's gonna come in right around $500 because it has a smaller standard deviation. Well, just like it's useful to you there in knowing how much you're going to pay, it's useful to a manager in understanding what costs he's incurring in his production. If he has a, an average error rate on one of his machines, it's good to know that average rate, but it's even better to know that and the standard deviation to understand what numbers are actually going into that average and what he can actually expect. Six Sigma uses a five-phase process to analyze those situations and those numbers and, and to make plans for the future. In phase one, you identify um, your goals and your targets or your problem areas. In step two, you gather all the data that you need and, and you start plugging it into the, these equations to make sense of it. And in step three, you, you review all that data and, and you see what you can find and, and dig out from that and start making connections. Step four is to implement a plan to make some changes and make some improvements to your processes. And phase five is to continue to monitor it and make sure everything's going according to plan and make any, any other necessary adjustments to keep things running smoothly. Six Sigma has varying applications. Like I mentioned, it started at Motorola when they were concerned with manufacturing and production. But since then, it's been picked up by many other production firms, and because of the numbers that they've boasted about saving, it's gone on to other sectors as well. The service sector is even caught on. They use it to analyze um, weaknesses in the service delivery, and they use it to analyze weaknesses in, in the, the production of their services as well. It's also caught on in the training department where the people doing the training use it to, to analyze who, who is to receive training and when. And they're able to cut their costs of training by using Six Sigma to make sure they're, they're not training the wrong people at the wrong times. Six Sigma is a great tool, but it's only as good as those who, um, who are in charge of putting it into practice.